When Devil May Cry 5 released, everyone loved it because it wasn't the last one. It fixed their favorite action series with excellent gameplay, a solid story, and the return of styles. And I'm not just speaking as an onlooker this time. I was there for this one. Besides Travis Strikes Again, Devil May Cry 5 was the first game I bought after moving out of my mom's house. The intoxication of independence made this game that much more fun. I woke up early on release day to wait outside of GameStop for an hour just to play this game before work. It was fucking awesome. Capcom listened to their fans and made the definitive next Devil May Cry. Every new weapon, every new mechanic, every new enemy was another layer of complexity on an already engrossing combat system. For a good few years, this was my favorite game in the series, but in reviewing DMC and by extension replaying Devil May Cry 3, something clicked for me. Actually, Devil May Cry 3 is the best game. And while returning to Devil May Cry 5 after my Lies of P video, I began to notice qualities that brought down the game. Hopefully I can articulate what's bugging me in this video so I never have to say anything negative about Devil May Cry ever again. Except for Gigapede and Leviathan's heart. Nero has one sword and one gun, with a playstyle focused entirely around getting as much damage out of them as possible with each individual face button press. All the Devil Breakers are cute but leave Nero defenseless during use, and none even come close to a fraction of Dante's utility. Punchline is just Sword Pierce, one move out of Dante's entire old Rebellion Swordmaster style. Tomboy and Rawhide are just worse versions of what could have been new weapons. The Buster Arm becomes redundant in New Game Plus, but it's still one of the better breakers. Overture is too simple to have much utility, Ragtime's AoE is too small, Helter Skelter's both boring and useless, and Gerbera's Air Dash is worse than both Snatch and Nero's Air Stinger. The break ages of all of these can do a lot of damage, but they all pale next to a single Sin Devil Trigger Sword combo, or a maxed out Royal Release both of which can be built from nothing in any individual encounter, whereas all of the Breaker's strongest abilities leave them destroyed after use. The Busters are a lot of fun to watch and a great way to separate Nero's playstyle from Dante's, but a lot of them can run pretty long, and watching Nero smack an enemy with a sword three times in a row isn't really all that engaging if I'm not the one pressing the sword smack button. If DMC6 is going to come out, and maybe it won't, I don't know, I think Nero is going to need to be tuned considerably to be as fun as Dante is in 3, 4, or 5. I don't know how to guard fly or whatever, so I think DMC5 is Dante's second best iteration after 3. The major problems I have are with his melee weapons. I think most of them aren't very fun. The Devil Sword Dante puts almost all of Rebellion on one button, which sounds great on paper, but in doing so removes the ability to use Prop Shredder at will, which is a huge blow to juggle combos, and replaces all of its Swordmaster inputs with Summon Swords, which are probably great for combos, but which I don't think feel fun to use. Balrog is an excellent weapon split into two mediocre weapons, which is a consistent problem in Dante's kit, but I'll get to that in a minute. More than the others, Balrog is separated into two distinct modes, Blow Mode for punching and Kick Mode for hitting things with your legs. Both modes have great movesets on their own, they're actually both decent weapons in their own right, but each has important aspects that the other doesn't. Blow Mode will cause Balrog to power up after landing 10 hits, but Kick Mode has its own move that requires Dante to stand in place for a few seconds. Kick Mode has a moveset that easily lends itself to combos, where Blow Mode is more about waiting for an opportunity to strike. In the footage on screen, I'm using Sion's collab trainer's Neo Balrog, which combines both Kick and Blow Mode into the same moveset. Using Neo Balrog is a little more complicated than the original, but personally, I think the new complexity is really satisfying. Anyway, my real problems are with Dante's other two weapons, Cavalier and Cerberus. Half of your time using Cavalier is spent waiting for the weapon to flash so you're allowed to press the attack button again. Big, slow weapons have a place in Devil May Cry, like 3's Beowulf and Nevin, but critically, the big, slow attacks are entirely dependent on the player to make them so. The player has the option of using these weapons quickly at the expense of damage dealt. The charged attacks are just another layer of complexity on top of combat, not an objective optimal use of the weapon, though this is more arguable for Nevin. Even if you don't charge your attack, Beowulf is still Devil May Cry 3's best weapon. Cavalier's Swordmaster attacks aren't substantially different from its melee button attacks. You either wait to use an attack in Twin Swords mode, or you wait to use an attack in Motorcycle mode. Cavalier's Saving Grace is Dante's only free air stinger, but you have to pay real-world money for the version that has it, and you aren't allowed to bring it into Bloody Palace, which is the mode where you would most want to use the entirety of your moveset. So of course the trainer fixes that too. Five Cerberus, on the surface, seems like an objective upgrade to threes. It's got two whole extra modes to make use of, after all. But because it has to be three weapons at once, none of them are very useful. Cerberus in three was a very easy to use parry monster. It threw out a ton of hitboxes constantly, so if you used it properly, you could obliterate enemies susceptible to parries, especially with Windmill, which gets replaced in five with Crystal. In 5, the Bow Staff and Nunchucks don't really like to combo into one another. The Nunchucks are useful when you're surrounded, and the Bow Staff is decent for single enemies, but the Bow Staff is, like, really boring. It's got a 3-hit combo, a crazy combo, a high time without a follow-through that always pushes enemies away from you, a really short-range stinger, and a single aerial move that immediately grounds Dante. 
Weapons being split in half is a consistent issue with Dante's moveset for a reason. Bifurcation is Devil May Cry 5's major theme that informs both the narrative and the gameplay. All the protagonists are part human and part demon, except V who is the half of Virgil that is entirely human. Nero's arm gets ripped off his body which separates him from his demon powers. Virgil's peak strength comes from the version of himself that is half and half. This is all basic stuff, I thought of all of this on the top of my head, there's probably still more that I didn't list. I just want to make clear that there is a reason for the weapons to be like this. Whether you think the narrative significance is enough to offset the damage it does the gameplay is subjective. Personally, I don't play Devil May Cry for the Ludo narrative. I play Devil May Cry to hear BREAKDOWN! BLAST OFF! GO TO HELL! Devil May Cry's surprisingly solid story has always been a nice bonus on top of the excellent combat design. Though surprisingly solid as far as action games go means it's just fine. The character writing is good, but I still think 3 story is better. I don't have that much to say about it, so I'm going to summarize it real quick. Virgil returns battered and broken to steal Yamato back from Nero after he absorbed it into Devilbringer in Devil May Cry 4. Virgil uses Yamato to separate his human and demon halves in a bid for more power. The human half V hires Devil May Cry, now bolstered by Nero and Nico, to kill the demon half Yurizen. Yurizen owns him a bunch of times in a row until Dante decides to love his dad and subsequently beats the fuck out of him. V takes advantage of the beaten Yurizen to merge back into Virgil. Dante decides to kill Virgil for being a big piece of shit and stops Nero from helping because it's fucked up to kill your dad but it's not fucked up to kill your brother. Right before Dante and Virgil kill each other, Nero knocks them the fuck out and says it's fucked up for family to kill family, then realizes the American dream of beating up his own dad. Virgil decides to chill out and he and Dante go to the demon world to kill all the demons and destroy the cliff at the roots. Nero's arm grew back so he gets to keep his devil powers and they'll live happily ever after. The end. Smile. You may have noticed I didn't talk about Lady or Trish, and that's because they don't do anything besides Job the Urizen, and we never got the Ladies' Night DLC. You may have also noticed I haven't talked about the game's third playable character, Virgil. Well, that's just because I haven't fucking gotten to him yet, and be a little patient, Jesus. You may have also, also noticed I haven't talked about the game's other playable character, V. There's a very good reason for that. It's because V sucks, and it's not fun. I have the same complaint about V as I do about Astral Chain, as I do about Bayonetta 3. I don't play action games to watch other characters play the game for me. I play action games to play the game myself. Summon-based playstyles in action games have never worked for me. Maybe one day we'll get a summoner who's intricate and interesting enough to justify their own playstyle, but until then, I'm not going to bother talking about a character I don't like. If you really want to know how he plays, you can get the game yourself. It's like 10 bucks on sale. Go on. Do it. Make a better video than me. Pussy. It might seem unfair that I'm reviewing Devil May Cry 5 modded specifically to avoid playing as V, but I would argue modding has always had a significant place in Devil May Cry's history. If I reviewed Devil May Cry 3 without style switching, a feature which wasn't available without modding until 2020, I would be doing the game a disservice by deliberately handicapping myself. When DMC Definitive got announced, the PC never got a release with the excuse given that diehard fans would mod the enhanced features in. And they were mostly right, sick there's still no fucking lock on. Virgil's basically perfect as he always is. The only thing I could possibly want for him is a Swordmaster button, but honestly, it might just oversaturate his moveset. Personally, I'd be perfectly content with tricking with L2 and choosing either a single or double tap of R2 to switch weapons. All three of his weapons flow nicely between each other and cover weaknesses the other two don't have. Beowulf is excellent for single target damage and has a tiny bit of crowd control, but has limited aerial potential with only a dive kick, and its high time follow through requires a charge. Force Edge is nice and quick with not just one, but two crazy combos. A short range stinger, a very fast drive, and Virgil's only air stinger. As a signature weapon, Virgil's Yamato is very well rounded. Being his only weapon with three ground combos, two air combos including a riser, a new helm breaker, a vacuum slice, and a dedicated ranged attack with his judgment cut. Even though Virgil only has the one attack button, all three of his weapons are killing machines, with additional bonuses being given for filling your motivation meter. By playing carefully, like by not running, not missing, not getting hit. Virgil's motivation meter will fill, allowing him to block certain attacks, perform special moves, and it buffs his weapons too. Yamato will have more range, Force Edge will hit more during each attack, and Beowulf gets an extra level of charge. One thing I liked about the older DMC is that even though EI was Yamato's gimmick, due to animation limitations, every weapon gets returned to its home after every attack. The epic processing power of the PlayStation 4 gaming console allows Dante to do the impossible and keep Sparta in his hands for a moment after swinging. The broadsword Virgil uses is replaced with Mirage Edge, though if they were going to replace Force Edge at all, I would rather they just design a new weapon entirely for it instead of half-assing it. I like that Dante has infinite ground dashes now, as opposed to 3 and 3, or 1 and 4. I like that Ebony and Ivory have different functions in Gunslinger and that the behavior is in line with earlier descriptions. There actually is a reason Dante carries two guns beyond it looking cool. Rebellion feels perfect, identical to DMC 3 and 4 despite the facelift to animations. The attempt at modernization of Rebellion into DSD is a great idea executed poorly. Maybe high time could be held into prep and double tap into follow through? Dante's Beowulf's high time works like this in 3, 
And although the execution might be a little wonky, I think if they're gonna fuck with muscle memory, they should just fuck with muscle memory. The new input for Stinger's million stabs was a strange adjustment, but it makes it much easier to output consistently now. King Cerberus is, again, a good idea implemented poorly. It seems like an obvious progression, but they really do feel like three different weapons that each didn't receive enough attention. I don't really have anything nice to say about Cavalier except that, admittedly, it is dope, crazy, badass, awesome, and sweet to hit monsters by driving a big motorcycle into them. Some people really love Cavalier R's Air Stinger, but I can live without it by pressing up R1 forward circle. Everything Nero has improved from DMC4. His combos feel better, Combo D is a unique animation, and his moveset is rounded out with a dive kick and a new gap closer that doesn't launch enemies away. His Devil Breakers also come with a brand new Snatch. If you like DMC4 Nero, he's still in there. DMC5 just builds on him in every capacity. Thought busters were too long? Here's Overture, another easy damage button without a 30 second long cutscene. New to the series and wish it had a dedicated dodge button? Here's Gerbera, whose air dash doubles as a reflectile ejector. Want to sprinkle in a little extra damage? Punchline. Think Shuffle's not good enough for parries? Rawhide. Just want to play as the old Nero? Here's a buster arm, fucker. And after all that, when you beat the game, you get Nero's Devil Bringer back, and you can just pop it on circle and pretend you're playing DMC4 again. They even bring back the old charge shot on top of the new one in case you're a maniac and thought it was fun. Wish Nero had a more unique aesthetic from Dante? Here's a new punk look with a fucking dance theme. Missed the innuendo from his last theme? Guess what, asshole? The devil triggers his fucking cock! The new Devil Bringer brings back all the functionality of the old one, like the old Snatch, Hold, Devil Trigger, but brings along a lot of new mechanics too. Using Snatch and DT will target an extra enemy and bring it along too, and you can even use Hold on both at once for some fucking reason. Brand new is the Bringer Knuckle, which peppers on a tiny bit of extra damage and more importantly resets enemy knockback for crazier combos. But frankly, I don't have the dexterity to use it effectively. I can barely exceed, which doesn't have the drawback of forcing you into a whole second long animation if you fuck up the timing. Dante's immensely complex playstyle is what attracted many players to Devil May Cry and why many keep coming back. The dexterously intensive but comparably simple playstyle Nero has is fun, but like Viola, I have difficulty believing he'll be capable of carrying an entire game. The only way I foresee DMC6 living up to its predecessors is by turning Nero's playstyle into Dante's, or otherwise introducing a more mechanically dense character. Another long-running action series sidestepped the new protagonist problem by both changing the genre completely and or releasing a spin-off featuring another equally complex combat system. There is no good solution here. It is incredibly difficult to keep expanding on the same action mechanics in a series as complex as Devil May Cry. They're already approaching the limits in Devil May Cry 5. Maybe the best solution is not to make Devil May Cry 6 at all. Devil May Cry 3, 4, and 5 all iterate on previous mechanics expertly, and 3 at least still holds up as one of the best action games ever made. I hope the same can be said of Devil May Cry 5 20 years after its release. I hope I don't come across as too negative. This is the only game in the series where I've beaten Dante Must Die mode twice with the same characters. It's the first time I've beaten a bloody palace, albeit with super costumes. I haven't beaten Hell in Hell in 5, only 4, but it's not off the table. What I'm saying is I fucking love this game. And the more you love something, the better you understand its shortcomings. For all its faults, Devil May Cry 5 is an excellent experience and an excellent game. Thanks for watching my fucking video. If you want to support me, you can leave your feedback in the comments and give your cat a little steak. Capcom has been pretty consistent with putting out quality of life DLC, which I feel reached its zenith with Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition and Devil May Cry 5. I don't really know how to feel about it. On one hand, you can unlock a ton of DLC just by playing the game, like super costumes or all the blue orbs. On the other hand, why are a couple MP3s and a single behind the scenes video worth as much money as something I can already access for free? It's kinda confusing too, I paid for the EX costumes like a fucking chump because I didn't know they were available in game.